Hello and welcome to Ormnico Television program Drishtikorn and this is Lovey Spackerel. You are watching Drishtikorn. Drishtikorn is a current affair program which focuses on uh, issues related with the socio-political economic agendas of Nepal. In this program we would like to discuss on the issues that which are related with the you and our lives. Whether that is a national level or a local or an international level, if that has got the impacts on, if that has make any impacts in our life, this will be the subject of Drishtikon. In Drishtikon, we would like to analyze the issue, not only analyze the issues, we try to reach into the crux of the issues. We would like to raise the agendas not, and we would like to recommend the solution from this platform. A very warm welcome in today's shows. We have a very special guest. Ms. Wandel Michael Mikwa. He is a f president of World Federation of Trade Union. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, tell us to have me. Sir, this World Federation of Trade <coughs> Union does have a very long history. It's, it has been established in Paris 3rd October 1945, and it has passed and seen the utmost of a lot of changes in the globe. Right now, this is our largest organization working in the trade union. I would like to know more. I would like to elaborate uh, versions and your point of opinion on your organizations. What are the mission, vision, and plan right now of this World Federation of Trade Unions? So we, we were born in 1945 on the 3rd of October. Six months before that, we had a meeting in London as the international leaders in the world. We were very interested in, discuss in discussion of the effects and the consequences of the Second World War because uh, we have experienced the First World War and the Second World War. The question at that time was that uh, who speaks on behalf of the working class in internationally in the world when this war occurs? And we were asking the question, who does the war belong to and who does the war, whose interest is it? We, uh, some of us were the view that says uh, wars have nothing to do the, with the working class. It's a war of, of capitalists. we fighting wars that has nothing to do with us and no impact. And for that matter, we felt that uh, we need a world body that must speak on behalf of workers. Because every time when wars have taken place and countries go into treaty, people speak on our behalf without knowing what our views on those issues. And those treaty has a direct impact into us, firstly as workers, secondly as a citizen of the international globe. So that's why it was important for WFTU to exist. We would not have existed without problems. When we were launched uh, the first uh, the, uh, Congress, the biggest issues that were key, and one of the key resolutions amongst other resolutions was a resolution on colonization. Remember, South Africa was there. That's where I come from. India was there. Uh, both of us were colony of Britain. And we wanted a resolution that must address the question of colony, uh, independence of countries and sovereigns of, of different countries as workers. And successfully, we managed to have the resolution to go through. That was the beginning of this international group. Well, four years down the line, uh, WFTO split because some countries, as such as United States of America, felt that they were in the trap of, 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 of communism, uh, communists coming together wanting to advance the interests of, of communists. Well, ideologically, they might, they might have been correct because uh, the interests of us as workers and interests of bosses are not uh, interlinked and they are contradictory because bosses want profit and we want to make sure that works must be socialized, that wealth must be socialized, that wealth must belong to those who are producing it and that working class must own the means of production. And the organization of working class, such as a communist, must make sure that they run on our behalf as our leadership. So, so the, the spirit did not surprise us. We, how, however, we continued after that. We continued with the, with the Second Congress. Of course, in the demise of the uh, Soviet Union, 
like any other organization that is its principle would have been based with struggles such as country like Cuba and many many, many more other countries but uh, we realized we came back and uh, we put ourselves together. Here we are. We still stand with those principles of the working class uh, that workers must be able to benefit to the economy that they produce. That's, 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 uh, that's, that's uh, in short, uh, the organization that I represent. We organize mostly the way you find us in, 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 in undeveloped countries such as countries like, like Nepal. Because our interest is in people of Palestine, our interest is in people of past countries, our interest is in people of Syria, our interest is in people of Iraq, uh, 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 people of uh, Libya, and so on and so on, and people of Nepal, and people of South Africa. And uh, at that time, WFTU was directly involved with the struggle against apartheid in my country and play a very immense uh, 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 contribution. And therefore, always where workers are, where people are suffering, we will always hand a hand, we will always hand a shoulder in the struggle for solidarity. So, uh, <coughs> how you and your organization evaluate the trade union activities right now currently going in in nepal well we're quite happy with ne with nepal's progress we're quite happy with uh, our members here in nepal i was here on on 2015 june at that time we were having a congress of uh, tui public sector and allied uh, few months when i left there was a devastating uh, uh, earthquake in Nepal. We send our, our, our sympathies to the people of Nepal and to our members and to our affiliates. So we, have, we are quite happy with the progress of our affiliate and our union and how comrades are progressing and mobilizing on behalf of WFTU and activists that we find them. I'm here today. I have addressed May Day yesterday. I was part of the march. Uh, we have addressed May Day. I met the leaders of communists, and now we much more pleased because we are we are told that the Communist Party of Nepal, the two big ones, are going to emerge, and we are also told that both of them are actually in government in Nepal. Well, uh, LDCs and the developing in uh, least developed countries like Nepal and the developing countries trade unions especially a political politicization of trade union are considered the barrier for the growth. So these are the fundamental differences between the employee and the trade unions, especially the industrialist. So <coughs> why trade unions are being considered as a negative tools for the growth? In, 19, in, 18, in 1886, on the 1st of May, in Chicago, in the United States of America, workers took up arms for the better working hours, for the better conditions. <coughs> the better working hours and the better working condition are in contrast of those who want to make profit and put profit in their pocket for their own interest. Those who have a view that uh, we are burdened to economy are those who do not like us because we have a different point of view. There is no way in which uh, they can be an economy if you don't look after those who produce the economy. They can never be economy in a country, in any country, without the helping hand of the working class. Workers are the ones who must be looked after. Workers who are the ones that must be uh, much more comfortable in the process of economy to develop. Sir. Nepal currently recently passes the new labor law. It is um, <coughs> it's in uh, August 11, 2017, which replaced the 1992 Act. Mm -hmm. So, is your organization or international bodies, international trade union, <coughs> from the point of view of international trade union, the adjustments and the <coughs> other facilities that have been put on in this labor law, new labor act, are enough? Not enough, 
we still uh, we expect more in a country that is run by communists. We expect communists to be to be to make sure that whatever they do, the the working class is a priority. Because working class is a consequence of communist. Therefore, communist workers must be the, a, a direct beneficiary of that struggle. Therefore, in our discussion with the communist leaders of Nepal, we've been promised, and uh, in fact, uh, the Minister of Labor addressed the, the May Day and uh, said a lot of uh, interesting issues, a lot of promising issues, amongst other things, is that government wants to make sure that there's a minimum wage, nobody must pay a less certain amount, uh, which I'm told what is the minimum wage, and they are telling us that that's going to increase. Uh, also, also discussed with us yesterday in our May Day that, uh, that there must be a provident fund that workers must have a future. And a matter that uh, pension union members have addressed with me, saying that uh, there are inequality in their pension. And the Minister of Labor yesterday addressed that and promised to rectify those things. Communist Party leaders have said to me, we must give them an, an opportunity to deal with these matters. And we did agree that each and everything in each and every change that must take place, our unions, our unions in different industry must be involved. Therefore, I'm promised that there's a conference on the 3rd of May in, in, in Nepal called by the government, led by communists, in which all of these issues must be discussed. And that discussion and the invite has been given to people like a communist part of South Africa, communist part of Cuba, communist part of China. Surely the communist part of, of, of Nepal wants to learn from this country, wants to learn how Cuba, for instance, relate with their members, how Cuba relate with trade unions in Cuba, because there are trade unions in Cuba, although it's a socialist country, but there's a trade union in Cuba. And the relationship between uh, our members in Cuba and the government of Cuba is excellent. So you did have a, a meeting with uh, Madhav Kumar Nepal, who is a former prime minister and a very, very, very influential <coughs> leader in Nepal and a ruling party, from a ruling party. You repeatedly say that there is a communist government in Nepal, but in Nepal it is being criticized that these are the communist party by their name, in the character they are more capitalist than communists. So there is still a danger of having a welfare issues, introducing a more welfare issues. <coughs> so what should be the role of a trade union, a domestic trade union as well as the, the federation like you? Class oriented trade union like ourselves must make sure that in this process they don't sleep, they don't wing eye, they are always awake. They, there is no class that can represent other class. Those were our members, despite the fact that the government is from communist, must make sure that they are represented and put issues in government and represent the interest of workers. And I'm being promised that uh, communist party government is 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 ready to welcome the the proposals of worker leaders, uh, and and they, they 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 promise to work hand in hand for improvement of the working class in Nepal. So this nation is still fighting for the minimum wage issue. The only the minimum wage <coughs> issues. So <coughs> all the agendas are a very I'm told. they are so many far away from we I'm are still struggling on a minimum wage issue, salary in times, these are the major issues, sir. I'm told that um, the minimum wage at the present moment uh, or the average is ninety dollars in private sector, yes. is hundred and eighty dollars in in, 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 in in public sector. Well on that score, because I had to calculate dollars to the to, to, to Nepal uh, a rupee. O on that score I've I've discovered that uh, nobody will be paid less than at least uh, four thousand per month. In, in Nepal, in Nepal money.
I must say that uh, that's a great progress. I have come across countries where people are living on, on one dollar per day. I must say that's, 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 a, that's a great progress. <coughs> people will never be satisfied if you only speaking by mouth. People will be satisfied when they see action. We must encourage the government of, of Nepal to deliver these things. We must see them. And the government of Nepal must use uh, uh, communication institutions like, like this to communicate to the public of Nepal what is it that they're intending to do. We will be watching I both watching the government of Communist Party in Nepal and the role of our members. And time to time, when we do think that our members are not doing what we expect them to do, we we'll definitely so to say to them, we might as well, we might not uh, interfere to your country's issues. We don't think in this case you are presenting our name and the name of the International Union for the World. But we, we have confidence of our leadership of, of WFTU in, in, in this part of the world. We think that uh, we can trust on them that they are going to make sure that they represent our members at the best of, of their ability. Mr. Michael, I would like to drag <coughs> your attention in the, some, some of the global issues, okay. especially after the economic crisis. Its impact is still in there. Europe and uh, in Europe and America, people are losing their jobs, either sacrificing the salaries, they are getting less salaries, less benefits. So how do you analyze that? The economic still the economic crisis and the impact of economic crisis is in a U.S. American and a European market is there. So what will be the la long-term impact in the labor market? The long-term uh, impact in the labor market is going to be devastating in the world, internationally. It's going to be devastating. And as the WFTU, it is always our message with our solidarity struggle that workers must organize into their, uh, into their organization because the strength to fight and make sure that we protect our interests to a stage that if it is possible, we must collapse the structures of capitalism and expose what is capitalism standing for and what is there for, for capitalism. Because it's not, it's not, for, it's not for people. Uh, I am coming from America. A few months ago, I was, in, I was in Los Angeles. We have an affiliate there. Um, it, is, it, is, it is worrying especially the level of health system of America. In Los Angeles, I, I traveled different street. I came across people who are living on the street, who do not have housing, who do not have jobs. It, it, it is frightening. But the answer lies to, to the working class, its ability to mobilize the society as an advanced detachment of the working class in advancing the interest of workers. Capitalism has no ability to resolve the problems of the world. But the system that has an ability to resolve the problem of the world is socialism. When we begin to socialize the economy and take interest into the social welfare of the working people and community at large, especially the different sectors of our community, youth, women, and, and, and people with disabilities. When we take that interest and we organize our society in voicing the failure of capitalism to take care of their interests, we will be able to defeat the capitalism in the world and we will be able to expose what capitalism is all about. If you notice, there has been two economical crises that have collapsed the economy of United States of America. You know what happened? Immediately when that, that was the case, there was a war in, 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 in Libya. Every time when, when capitalist economy faces a problem, they saw the, uh, America... They designed the war yes, somewhere in the globe. Exactly because war helps capitalist economy to re-engineer itself. Because the reason why it collapsed, when the stock is nowhere else to be taken, when the stock is nowhere to be used, the, 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 the capitalism system comes into cul-de-sac that cannot go anywhere. 
for that to change they open up things through a wall they, for them to create crisis for instance as we speak Syria was a very very stable country very very stable country back then uh, and back then up until Hillary Clinton when he when she was the secretary of the state under Obama organized uh, organized vigilantes to destabilize the government of Syria hence today we have uh, refugees we have people who cross countries to go to Europe to, to look for greener pastures, kids at the level of three years traveling alone without their mother and their parents because they are dead in the war. That crisis, it is created by the United States of America. And anybody else to be brave, their door must be put into the door of government of the United States of America. Libya was a very, very stable country under, under Monoam Gaddafi. I am not saying Gaddafi did not have problem. But let's ask a question. Why NATO did not want to give African leaders to resolve the political issues of Libya? Why they had to kill Manam Gaddafi? Why was Gaddafi not being taken into jail and asked to be answered? Because when you take a prisoner and you kill it, you kill the justice. Because the justice system must be able to prove to us why is this person being arrested. Muhammad Gaddafi was not given that. And that causes a huge economical problem with countries such as uh, Tunisia, with countries such as... Uh, as, as, uh, as uh, uh, where we have uh, what is this country uh, Egypt because Libya was a sort of uh, a strong economy in that African continent in that area in in providing jobs and that and when that country fell apart as we speak there's still a war in Libya and Libya can never stop to have war why because Libya, ma Libyan people must continue to fight while the Americans are taking resources from Libya. People of Iraq must continue to fight while they are taking oil from, uh, from America. People in Syria must continue because when that happens, Turkey has an opportunity to, to take the resources of that country. As we speak, Turkey has occupied one of the very rich regions of Iraq. Of, of, of Syria because there is a crisis in that country. Surely, if Russia did not intervene, know that I, 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 I praise Russia, but that intervention has brought some breathing space to, to government of Syria in order to be dealing with some, some of other issues. Capitalists are very funny people. They have created an ISIS uh, zone. So, yes, uh, definitely the cap. In a, uh, but we cannot escape this uh, capitalism in a market <coughs> economy in a w one fine morning. This uh, the the world is ruled by their systems right now. So, but instead of these all, some nations ca are come up with uh, their own idea solutions. Uh, I would like to know about the experience of Ethiopia which is much more very related to the Nepal as well. I have been in Ethiopia recently. Uh, there's a so the conditions of uh, middle class people and uh, working class people wow, in Ethiopia, wow, are they wow, increasing? Wow, wow. Firstly, let's discuss the, the infrastructures and infrastructure in that country. It's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. No, if you don't, if you have not up to standard in terms of in infrastructure, it's difficult to talk about the growth of economy because growth of economy depend firstly in transport. So, 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 it's one of is one of the country that needs a lot of uh, improvement. Unfortunately, the developing countries a mistake that they do is to think that developing countries are there for them. No. I don't think that's an, an issue. And uh, I, I suspect that's one of the reasons why today we have uh, BRICS, okay? India, Russia, China, South Africa. Whether that is there for working class is not a question. We are clear. Those uh, is another capitalist uh, uh, mode 
which is not is not for us but but it it is an important uh, block because that block provide a breathing space of those who wants to engage into this battle of 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 capitalism and it create unbalanced power and it uh, apply bricks far as the United States of America is concerned. And, 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 and it's a very key issue to look into because one of the biggest problem in the world is what we call the United Nations. United Nations, if it doesn't change the way in which it does things, it is not going to help us to resolve many, many issues. Because again, it's a still question of who's big, who's small. It's not a question of coming up into a system that must be able to, to help, particularly help countries that are still developing. Let's take issue, issue of AIDS and HIV. Compare Southern Saharan Africa and developing world countries and compare to Britain and America and understand the devastation of AIDS and HIV. You, you, you will realize that Capitalism is there for itself, not anybody else. If you, if you get into statistics of AIDS and HIV, you will note that capitalism is there for itself, not, not anybody else. And therefore, working class must organize. WFTU, World Federation of Trade Union, must take the space, which is what we are doing. That's why we are in Nepal today. So, uh, well... How aware of this world political order, changing world political order, especially in Asia, economic progress in Asia, as the country like China, India and Korea, they are progressing. So what are the, your point of view that how the these chains will impact the, the lower class life The styles? devastating of that progress is a, is, 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 is a, is a very serious to, to working class. and. Uh, Hence, we said to our colleague in India. Do you think the Chinese progress is also very serious for the working class? Are they living this, uh, their own communism culture and the politics, and they are heading towards <coughs> this more liberal and a in, capitalist approach? In, in a society where everything is about me, everything, it is a problem. Okay. And uh, you're raising another thing that we must discuss another day when it comes to China. Because one strange issue about China and its federation is this thing of itself being independent, not wanting to be part of the global world. So is, is, one, is one of the problems. So, so, so we can say certainly where would no, we are not sure of... Uh, of, of uh, solidarity struggle. Up until we hear the working class in China speaking and explaining to us, because none of us are very clear as what is happening inside China and what is, seems to be the agenda. China, Communist China are, is a very interesting organization because remember recently they have a policy where leader can lead for a certain period and then give over to another. That constitution has now been changed. There's no limit in the China's constitution. This leader of, of communist must lead uh, 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 as because I suspect that's where the revolution or their direction of their socialism. But the problem that bothers me in that in that in that in that in that progress and that uh, that that line of China is the absence of international working class solidarity. That's our concern. And regarding India, how do you evaluate the Indian well, labor situations? In India, we are well organized. And our members are always in war every day. Time to time, three months ago, more than 6.5 million workers were in the street. We are fighting. The, the issue there is, uh, is that we must just be more organized and including our communist party as a vanguard uh, more in the same direction. And uh, if we can do that, we have a greater chance of uh, do strides and within the, 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 the those forces. And uh, we think that we can make a lot of changes 
if we can be better organized. But we're there. We are fighting and time to time we are in communication with our members and time to time we are of suggestion. The great uh, solidarity amongst working class of India is fascinating and is satisfying because we can only be satisfied in this struggle of capitalism. We can only be satisfied when we are sure of our mobilization, when we are sure of our ability to fight. Yes, sir. And uh, we'll still, there are so many subjects to be discussed, sure. mainly the BRICS may produce a challenge to the ASEAN and NAFTA or not, will be the topics after this break. Thank you very much. Well, we are in a break, we are going to the break and don't go away, please be seated with us. Welcome back. You are watching Drishti Gore, myself, Lovis Pakarel. Guest, today's guest is Ms. Weindil Makail Mkaiwa, President, World Federation of Trade Union. So before going into the break, you have been mentioning about the BRICS and the strength of the BRICS. So do you think that BRICS can produce a challenge to the NAFTA, EU and uh, ASEAN, a alliance like NAFTA, EU and ASEAN in terms of producing a job, creating a job? and providing a welfare as well as better livelihood to the middle class people. The, the, those two bodies, in my view, should not compete, but they should help and uh, complement each other in, 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 in producing and helping the world. But depend that who are they standing for and what, is, what are their principles. Um, as I said to you, that class contestation has a tendency of not being uh, representing one another. So it's going to depend what, what is going to happen. I don't want to borrow the crazy president's word, wait and see, uh, Donald Trump. But I, 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 if, if I were them, I would not uh, compete to one another because I think that the competition that must be done is on WTO and the uh, European Union. Because as we speak, if we take South Africa, for instance, South Africa has an agreement with another state to sell chicken. South Africa is struggling as we speak because America has a tendency of dumping ship material that the farmers and agriculture organization in that country are unable to compete because the government of the United States of, of America subsidizes their farmers highly. And such challenges are often a problem and they do kill the economy of the countries. As I said, capitalist economies have a tendency of competing to kill one another for the problem of su supremacy in order to suppress and oppress and exploit workers. That's oftenly being the issue. It depends to the government that is the who is that government interest that it protects. Hence, we say we have a great interest in the situation of Nepal, that now communists are in power. We have a great interest because we expect the communist government that whatever they do, whoever they speak, they protect its constituency. And in this case, its constituency is the working class. So uh, regarding uh, countries like Nepal, but at last, when it comes to the trade union issues, normally it considered mainly on the organized sectors. Mm -hmm. Everybody thinks about the industrial <coughs> levers and <coughs> other things. But the country like Nepal and uh, LDCs, where we where the majority of levels are in unorganized sector mainly in the farms so what are the tools that has to be taken by the government to protect those people who are in a more vulnerable area on in an unorganized sectors especially in the farming sector firstly the government of nepal must have ear of its society and listen and unify its society and gain confidence of a society so that there is no outside influence that is able to create problem. If people of Iraq, for instance, were united, 
under Saddam Hussein's rule. I'm confident that the United States of America would not have invaded that country. The reason why it was easy for the United States of America to invade that country is because people of Iraq were not united under Saddam's rule. I am not saying I support what America have done. It is exactly the same thing to Muammar Gaddafi. The key, and we can use Cuba in this case as a classical example. Currently, we just have five Cuban that have been released by the government of the United States of America. The Cuban people were united in that struggle. The Cuban people are united against the blockade by the United States of America. The Cuban people are together. <coughs> I am not talking about uh, some few individuals who have issues who wants to take the boat and go to over Miami because they think that to be in the city of America is a green pastures. I'm talking about committed Cuban uh, patriot, people who believe in their country and people who believe in their principles. Um, as we speak, that's the only country that is standing. As we speak, that's the only country that succeeded the, 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 the falling of Soviet Union, still standing with the principle of socialist importance. So unity is important. And I want to believe that people of, of Nepal must learn from that and make sure. Definitely, that is we key. did have experience uh, three series of economic blockade from our neighboring nations. We are day by day going into the trap of this trade deficits. We don't have a factories, we don't have industries. Our trade unions are divided, they are engaged in their own dirty politics. They charge that there's a charge that they functions <coughs> there's a malfunction between the trade unions and the people like us are suffering day by day. So this is the time that we have to be united, definitely. Yes. So yes. so your advice to the Nepalese people how and your advice to the trade unions how they operate in a harmony so that the more benefit could be transferred to the people. This is a great opportunity to our members. This is a great opportunity to the leadership of WFTU in Nepal. This is a great opportunity to the trade unionists uh, in this country as a whole. And this is a great opportunity to people of, 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 of Nepal. The unity between the working class and its mother body with communists. And I'm very happy that the communists are one to be united. Uh, my advice to them is that unity is a key. You must be united. Whatever you do must be something that is of great importance in your country. Um, we have a tendency when we are in the developing world of listening to many, many different advice, not listening to ourselves, what we, have, what we want. And um, I want to believe that's the reason why the leadership of the communists are calling the conference on the 30th of May, because they want to learn with countries like South Africa. They want to learn with countries like Cuba. And I have said to them, we have said to them, when you go to this country, take what is right. Don't take each and every rubbish that you come across in those countries. Take what is right for Nepalese. Take what is right for your country. But at the end of the day, the solution lies to you in the country. And uh, we want to encourage country, uh, places uh, like media, like your people like you, that uh, uh, government of Nepal must be monitored, but equally, government of Nepal must be assisted in order to succeed to their endeavor. I am not saying media must be the lap dog of the government of, of Nepal. When the government of Nepal doesn't do well and must be criticized and the crisis must be fair and must be constructive. And all role players and all uh, stakeholders must focus into this project. This project in order to succeed, it needs all those reps. But with a principle that says 
This project is a project of people of Nepal, and this project is a project of the working class of Nepal, and the society of the working class and the sectors of the working class. Well, uh, we are at the end of our show, so I would like to ask you a very personal question, if you well, don't mind, sir. You have started your career as a worker in a f Apple firm in a Western Cape. Right now, you are a president of a second time president of World Federation of Trade Union. So, how this transformation is possible in your life, sir? I'm a rural boy who come from the eastern part of the Eastern Cape where I'm born. I'm born by two people, men and a woman, who never get an education. Myself, I'm at academic level, uh, bit and pieces. But uh, thanks to the, the College of the Working Class, <coughs> that's where we are. Um, in South Africa, I'm leading a trade union that has uh, almost 300,000 membership in the public service. I'm a president of that union. And then um, on the 17th on October, on the 5th of October in Deben, in South Africa, I was elected as the president of WFTU. I'm serving together with Comrade George Mavrikos, a general secretary who's based in Athens, and uh, our office is based in, in Athens time to time I do fly to Athens to have a discussion with General Secretary and uh, plan how do we deal with the world and how do we mobilize the world. And that's one of the reasons why, uh, why I'm in Nepal. I'm, I was in Los Angeles. I'm now here. Uh, very soon I'm going to be in Geneva in one of the conferences that is representing the workers and WFTU in particular. Well, you are one of the sample examples for uh, Lots of uh, people thank around the much. globe. Thank you very much. Thank and you very much. we'd like to thank you for your valuable time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for having sir. us. And the audience, this is the time to say goodbye from this Thirsty Corn. Keep watching Ernigo Television. Namaste.